Hi y'all, welcome back to Skunky Designs for what's going to be an episode about our roadmap for 2021. This is something that I hadn't really thought about doing, but there's so much going on right now here at Skunky Designs that I wasn't sure that the public really knew what we were headed to and what our plans were. So I thought I would clarify that in this episode. So ton of parts have been coming in. We've got these, here are the transformers for the 6SQ7 amps. This is the laydown that was, or this is the stand-up that was the laydown version. I've got uh, two of these Hammond chassis here. I got a um, big bag of parts for capacitors and resistors and stuff. We got the, uh, the bottom plates that are going to be used on the prototypes. Got giant bag of parts here for the preamplifier project, the phono stage preamplifier, which I'm really excited about. Got the chassis for our preamplifier, which is longer than the current one I have, and I'll go into that in the build series on this. Got output transformers and power transformers for another project that I'm super excited about. It's a um, ST30, a Dynakit ST35 clone that's going to be built as monoblocks as a 17 watt per channel push pull amp that really is supposed to sound great. And it's going to be using the mods for the regulated cathode bias system that Dave came up with that's supposed to sound really good. Again, Get into that when we start doing that build series. Just, there's so much going on. I was, my head swimming on which direction to head in. And since we've got two amplifier builds behind us now, we've got the 6BQ8, and we've also got the 300B build basically behind us. Both of those are at a good point where they sound good. I'm happy with them. Not to say that the 300B won't be making a cameo appearance in a future video doing some more tweaks to it. There's some things that I want to try like AC versus DC uh, heater voltage on the direct heated triodes to see what those sound like. And there's some other little tricks and stuff that I may want to try in the future. But honestly, I'm kind of burnt out on dealing with it for a while. So we're going to park that project as and check it off as a kind of finished one for now. And I think the next thing I want to focus on is the phono stage preamp. I've had a lot of comments, people, where's a preamp? You know, let's see a preamp. I want, you know, I want a phono stage. And I do know that I've compared this EAR 834 tube preamp to a fairly high-end solid state one that gets just rave reviews from people and I personally think this little tube preamp sounds better. It's got a little bit of hiss that the solid state one doesn't have and my build on it has a tiny bit of hum too which is why I'm ready to rebuild it. Plus I want to aesthetically make this match some of my other amps and I'm probably going to have the chassis powder coated instead of being bare aluminum. But don't want to give too much away, too many spoilers on that until we get into it. But I think that's going to be our next big project. I've got all the parts here for it. And it's something that will really enhance a tube amplifier system and may possibly get some people back into vinyl that have been listening to DAX and CDs. I was convinced that CDs were you know, far superior to vinyl until I got one of these phono stages, hooked it up to a decent turntable, and listened to it myself. There's also something about two phono stages that rounds off the harshness of the clicks and pops from the dust where they are not as unsettling. And so even if your vinyl is not perfectly clean, it sounds really good using a tube phono stage. The next project that I think I'm going to dive into is this ST35 clone push-pull amp. I've never built a push-pull amp. Um, 
I want to really hear what the difference is. All I've done so far is single-ended tube amps, and I know that push bulls supposedly have a very different sound to them, and I just want to hear for myself, you know, the difference in the two. So that's going to be my next project, plus all the irons here, and so I don't have to wait on anything. The 6SQ7, I know there was a lot of people excited about that. I think I may do a video or two kind of on the initial, you know, maybe go over the schematic and do some initial kind of stuff with it. But I don't suspect that it's going to be the focus of this channel until later in the year. The other thing I wanted to clear up is Skunky Designs was never intended to be a for-profit business. And I know it looks like we're doing branding and all of that kind of stuff. I really just wanted to get people excited about this whole open source tube amplifier community. And everything that I'm building is going to be open source. I'm going to have a full published bomb. I'm going to have a full published schematic that is not going to be don't share off the internet kind of thing. I want people to be sharing this stuff. That's the whole purpose of this. And all of you subscribing and liking my videos and commenting has just inspired me to just ramp up what I was going to do with this channel. I will say in the first quarter of 22, I do hope to put together some sort of a kit for this 6SQ7. If nothing else, just a fully prepped chassis that you can buy from me. I think there's plenty of fab shops here in Atlanta that could fab this thing up for me and powder coat them, and maybe make them from scratch, maybe, you know, have them do all the drilling and stuff on a, a Hammond chassis and have those up for sale because I, I feel like that that's one of the stumbling blocks for a lot of folks is the metal work. And, you know, I've worked with my hands and done fab work most of my life, so it's not something that seems hard to me, but I can imagine if you've never done this kind of stuff that that might be intimidating. And let me know in the comments if you would like a more detailed chassis fab series where that that's what we really focus on, not the amplifier itself, but the tools and the things I use to fab these chassis up. If that would be something y'all would like to see, uh, that would be a, a fairly easy video to do. The other thing that I'm hoping to be able to do going forward, and I hope this um, idea pans out, someone offered to mail me a Bowie Range A50, new in the box, for me to do a video series on where I do a review, then I do the modifications that I did to my own 300B amp, and do before and after testing, and then you know, he wants me to mail the amp back to him, which is fine. And so, you know, it'll be a win-win for both of us and you. And you will get to see this amplifier critically reviewed. You'll get to see Skunky Designs mods done to it. And then uh, the owner will get back a amplifier that should be much nicer than the one that he sent me. So hopefully that pans out. I think that'll be a fun thing to do and possibly do with some of these other um, budget made in China amps, you know, if people could, were willing to send them to me to then review them, do check out doing some mods to them and then send them back a better amp than they sent me, I think that'd be really useful for the channel and, you know, would fit in with the whole theme of doing budget audio, which is what this is all about. I just, I hate seeing this idea that to have good audio and to have a revealing system that you have to spend twenty thousand dollars you know i just don't think that's the case so one of the other things that i decided to invest in is i've had a lot of comments and emails about you know what is the thd of this amp and you know what's the what's the full power at one percent thd and you know this kind of stuff honestly i had no way of measuring any of this i mean i've been you know, ear listening to the amps, and I still believe that you have to listen to the amps. I'm not sure that even sophisticated THD measuring equipment is going to 
tell you everything that you need to know about how nice an amp sounds and whether it's too bright or whether it's the bass sounds saggy and, and or muddy and smearing and those kind of things. I think those kind of things you still need to listen to the amp for. But I think it will be very helpful to have something that we can do more precise measurements to. And this is not going to replace my old school analog Technic scope. This is in addition to. This is another tool to use. And I realize that this is not one of the most high-tech or highest quality testing things, but it is something that's affordable to me. I looked at some of the, even the used HP audio analyzers were in decent condition were over $1,000. And that's talking about a used piece of gear. And so I bought one of these analog discovery system kits. And it comes with two probes. It comes with the USB device that you hook up with the software. It comes with a breakout board for the BNC breakout board kit thing that they have for it. And it comes with some other little clip things that I'm not sure how useful those are. But the main thing is it comes with probes, the BNC breakout, and it comes with the device itself. I also got a BNC to RCA cable with a female RCA to two male Y cable. And plugging these together, you can hook the function generator out to the two inputs and then the two probes can get hooked to the outputs so you can run the analyzer suite, which is freeware that I've seen a lot of good things about too that looks like it can do frequency range measurements and stuff that right now are not as easy to do. And I think these automated sweeps and THD measurements and stuff will be, if nothing else, something fun. And I've got an old laptop here that I can use set up on my bench and install the software on and stuff when I get to the final testing phases and be able to kind of run these amps through their paces, both pre-built ones that people want to have modified, but also these from scratch builds so we can see how they compare to what else is on the market. So the last thing is Skunky Designs now has a website. There's not a lot of content on it yet, but I wanted to focus on having it themed and branded to what we stand for here at this site and this channel. And I have a page about what is Skunky Designs, who are we, what, what is this about, it has a, a video page, it has a place where you can contact me. And I do plan to have a, as part of the projects page, we're going to have pages of each amplifier with the bombs, with the schematics. I'm probably not going to do a big web write-up about step-by-step -step building in that format. I feel like that I've done that well with the videos and honestly feel like it's a better format than a step-by-step -step web page format. If there are enough people that really want a step-by-step -step web format, you know, build, I could do that, but that's going to take a lot of time that I really would rather invest on doing more builds and more fun stuff. So go check out my website, bookmark it, and hopefully I'll be putting more content there shortly. Please subscribe to my channel. That's going to help me, inspire me to build more stuff and to put more content out. Like the video. Please comment below about things you'd like to see in the future. Maybe things in 2022 that you'd like to see us do. And again, if anybody wants to send me one of their, you know, budget amplifiers. I'm happy to do a review on it. Look at the schematic, the circuit, try to figure out ways to improve it, do some testing on it, and send it back to you. So that's something I'd like to be able to do too for the community. So 
Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.